concern. You mentioned oil. Uh, let's talk about that at all. Um, down to 45 now? This is funny. Like a lot happened since the last time though. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> and oil is the perfect example of that. Look at it's this. This is like shot. three was right. Um, so this is, uh, so Don meets Albert Lou somewhere around here, <laughs> October 5th. Uh, there's people in Texas who don't want us to get together very often. That's really funny. Uh, right? <laughs> and uh, that was $75. Yeah, quite, a, now, quite an experience. Do you know what news event happened the day of the top in oil, October 3rd? What happened? No. That was the day that the murder of Jamal Khashoggi was first Separate. released into the world uh, in the Turkish media. You know, he, he was supposedly murdered in, in Turkey in the Saudi embassy. Okay. And that created a firestorm of global criticism of the Saudi regime. I think it was motivated primarily to embarrass Trump during the midterms, to put him under difficult pressure to do something to, okay. to punish Saudi. Okay. Um, one of Trump's signature initiatives was to walk away from the Iran nuclear deal and not recertify the waiver of sanctions levied on other countries that do business with Iran as a means of isolating Iran, right? So countries like Japan, India, even China that are big buyers of Iranian oil were, threat were looking at san U.S. sanctions clicking in in the first week of November just before the midterms. Saudi became such an unspeakable topic at that point that Trump ended up extending the waivers for six months. So all of a sudden you've got these countries still able to buy Iran's oil, but you've got Saudi that's been pumping till its head caved in to make up for what it was anticipating would be a shortfall starting in November when people couldn't buy from Iran anymore, but now they can, and all that Saudi oil is still there. Okay. Oh, I we see. went from a shortage to a glut oh, okay. just because one guy was killed in an embassy. 